Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Evictors Podcast. So, currently where we stand, the Michigan Wolverine football team is in shambles. There's basically nothing else to say. Last week, I predicted two things that could happen. Number one, Don Brown adapts and fixes his defense while Joe Milton grows and shows touch. Or, number two, Don Brown can't adapt and Joe doesn't have natural touch that he can't grow into. And it was worse than I thought. Last week... The deep shot after deep shot after first down was thrown all over us. It seemed as if almost every other play we would jump off sides on defense, and our DBs apparently only have the ability to hold jerseys. That's the only thing they had in their mind. I do have to give it to Don, though. He did switch to zone and tried making adjustments, but it just didn't work, and it honestly made it even worse. He's lost his touch. It's been known since November of 2018, and now it's apparent two years later against MSU in Indiana. Don's biggest argument was that although the defense faltered against OSU and elite teams, when they matched up with teams that have less talent, they overpower them and outmatch them. All of that is out the window. The difference between the 2016 and 2017 teams and now is that all teams know his schemes and Don doesn't have the skill to be able to be, come up with more schemes that fit our defense. And he's really just not a good defensive coordinator anymore. He tried adapting, but in doing so, we learned the truth. He just can't coach. And it's as simple as that. In Michigan's last five games over defense, we have given up 36 points on average. We need Bob Shoot back badly. And our schemes didn't work zone or man. Corners were somehow worse than last week. The line got pressures but still severely underperformed. Aiden Hutchinson got injured. And Dax is basically the only defensive player on the field. I don't know. I really feel bad for Dax, man. Just watching him. Him and Brad Hawkins were the only ones that really made plays out there. Michael Barrett tried. He still didn't get that much done. Um, I think he had the second highest tackles on the team, and I give it to him. But it doesn't make a difference having a three-man defense. There's nothing left to say. Don just simply can't coach at a high level anymore. Now let's move on to offense. So offensively, Josh Gaddis took all the plays. So he basically took all the plays that worked against Minnesota and just threw them away from Michigan State and Indiana. It seemed the spirit of Pep Hamilton was in the building with constant predictable handoffs to sign up the middle, sometimes back-to-back, and messy forced passes on first down. Speed and space is non-existent. There were no dump passes, screens, or sweeps that utilized our speedy talent that was brought in for the exact reason of speed and space. No more excuses for Joe Milton. He just isn't a QB. He's a running back with a strong arm. He was 18 for 34 with 344 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions, which really should have been 5 interceptions. Only two plays did I see great touch, and even on those touchdowns, the receivers had to lay out for the ball, and just constant overthrowing or underthrowing, and we were driving down the field, down by 10, uh, it was fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, and I don't know what he was trying to do, he stood up in the pocket, he was trying to get Cornelius Johnson on like the comeback route, and he was like, what, like 20 yards down the field, and he just bullets it to this safety I think it was it was a safety or a linebacker, and he was just standing there. It was 15 yards before Cornelius Johnson. It was one of the worst throws I've ever seen. So, to go off that, like I don't I don't believe that I'm saying this, but Shea Patterson never looked better. We knew that we would go down to two offensive linemen this game to move on, but this it was just like dang, like. We had 13 yards on 18 carries, averaging 0.7 yards per carry. That is beyond terrible. Corman Haskins had to fight and juke for at least like one yard per carry the entire game. There were times where I would just see the offensive lineman throw back and he'd be on the ground and the hole that Hassan was trying to hit, he'd have to just juke and spin around and just get knocked in the backfield because there's no hole for him to run through. There was no line. Just like Daxton carried the defense... Ronnie Bell kept the team breathing with 149 yards and 6 receptions with a touchdown. Overall, dreadful play calling, terrible offensive line play, and a non-existent QB doomed our chance of putting up more than 3 touchdowns against this Indiana team. And I'm really not trying to overreact, but this is a breaking point. And there's there just appears to be always excuses within every single loss at Michigan over the past few years. Against OSU, it's bad defensive play. Against MSU, it was not enough heart. And against Indiana, it's not enough talent, right? Right? Well, no. Actually, listen to this stat. 
In the past four years, Indiana has signed zero five stars and four four stars. Okay, now listen to this. In the past four years, Michigan has signed four five stars and 54 four stars. Stop giving excuses. Just win a football game, please. I can't tell you how terrible. It was horrendous hearing that stat after I watched that Indiana game. I don't know who said it, but I know for a fact someone tried to bring up the point that Indiana is more talented in the places that matter. I don't care who you are. We have 50 more four stars. So if four stars and five stars talent really matter, then we would be blowing them out of the water. But no, it's coaching. And to move on from that, let's move on to Jim Harbaugh. He always somehow finds a way to find a new low. Not only did he get outcoached by the MSU team that lost 7-49 to 0-2 to Iowa, he just allowed the ending of the 24-game win streak versus Indiana. He can't even fire his underperforming defensive coordinator after two years of big game disappointment. So yes, it is Don Brown's fault on the defensive failure, but why is he even still here? That's the thing. Why is he coaching then? If this... If everyone wants to push it on the defense, and Harbaugh has done good things like bring in um, Josh Gaddis and try to mix things up, but everyone's like, oh, well, it's the defense's fault. Who do you think employs the guy that runs the defense? So, yeah, there you go. Harbaugh laid all his chips on the table, and he got whooped. The team was undisciplined, had bad blocking, had mistakes, bad schemes, and bad play calling. Let's face it, Harbaugh had reached his peak a while ago. The 2018 Ohio State game marked the beginning of the end. He had a great 2016 team, which could have gone far, but that fourth down play by JT Barrett had bigger implications than anyone could ever predict. Strap in for a long season, boys. I don't even care about the upcoming recruiting classes because obviously we're just wasting those players' talent and time. We need change more than we need four stars. It was Harbaugh's last stand, and he fell harder than Dixie. I'm Jeremy Brown. This is the Victors Podcast. As always, go blue.